All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Check it out before I get into this video. A couple things. First of all, make sure you subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I post videos. And put a comment down there. You know, let me know. I don't know. Let me know something about yourself. It's always really cool to be able to interact and to be able to have a conversation with the community. To me, that's fantastic. The next thing. Got the bars coming up, so you're going to see apes probably in the next couple weeks. It's probably going to take me some time to do it. I'm not an expert, not a mechanic, none of those things. So it's going to be an adventure. Obviously, I'm going to have a good friend, Jason, helping me out, and that's going to be truly a blessing. One thing that I will mention about my order that I got from Rexilla, it was a little bit demotivating because... Primarily, the cables were supposed to be in stock, so they were supposed to be there. Well, let's just say a couple days later, I get an email saying, you know what, they're not there. You know, upon going to the warehouse or some stuff, we realized that they weren't available. So, here's the thing, we're going to return you your money, right? But, I guess that was okay, you know, you can't get really too much about that, but the problem was, that it took several days to get the money back. So not only I waited several days to get an email saying that there is no product, but I also waited a couple of days waiting for my money to be released. And obviously, I mean, the cables were like 400 bucks. So it's not like I got another $400 hanging around to buy cables, waiting in the other money, yada, yada, yada. You guys get the point. So just today, the money got released. So obviously now I gotta order a new set and it's gonna take a few more days to get those cables here. So I want to tell you about this thing cause I'm driving to church and I know I've been doing a lot of driving to church, but literally with the crisis and things like that that we had, church was one of the thing places that you were able to drive to. So I did a lot of driving or a lot of riding on church and now I'm gonna go to help the pastor with some live streaming issues, right? So well, the thing is probably by the time that I come out of there, it's gonna be dark and driving at night, it brings some consequences and it may bring some issues. So I wanted to talk about that. Maybe some of you guys could give some advice. Maybe some of you guys could share some thoughts and things like that right but also i want to kind of share a story with you guys and again i hope you guys enjoy it let me know what you think down in the comment section below but first of all the story here's the deal many 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 years ago <laughs> that's how you know you're getting old when your stories are many many years ago right i want to say it was about 2010 maybe i don't know i think it was because that's when i went to okinawa japan and i got stationed there but many years ago i was riding my first bike, which was a Jixer 750, and I was riding with two guys, right? And funny thing, we all had Jixer 750s, and it was fun. You know, back then I was younger, and I was doing things that it was probably stupid. But nowadays, or in that particular ride, obviously nowadays I tend to ride a little bit more conservative, I guess in a way, you know. Plus, my back hurts, everything hurts, so... I just want to enjoy my life and cruise, right? But back in those days, it was a little bit different. But during that ride, we were just having a really good time. And in fact, we actually stopped. We actually stopped, I want to say, a quarter of a mile before this incident started. So again, you know, we stopped. And the reason why we stopped was because the sunset was happening. And it was just beautiful. And we were in North Carolina, in the country. I mean, just beautiful place, you know, no cars, nothing else, just the country. I mean, I love riding through that, right? Way better than riding through cities. But again, we stopped, we took some pictures. It was just amazing. We jumped back in the bike and this is when the accident actually happened. And I'm gonna tell you when it happened, the guy who got into an accident, he, he couldn't have been gone or going more than, I don't know, 40, 50 miles per hour. It was very quick. It caused a lot of damage and not really sure why this guy is going so slow. Literally, not not sure. He's going 25, 25 miles per hour. Great. But anyways, I guess it gives me some time to talk before I get to church. But there he was 
We jump back in the bike and we take off. And as we take off, I'm the last guy in the pack. I look to the left and I see a deer, but I only see the head, right? And again, you know, it was just kind of weird because I only saw his head poking out. But at the same time, you know, the guy that was in the front, in front of me, obviously, two, you know, two motorcycles in front, the guy actually leading the pack, it was completely to his left. So he had no idea, literate, no idea. Out of nowhere, this deer jumps, lands right in the middle of the road, and let's see what's the deal with this. Anyways lands in the middle of the row and just touches the row and jumps and it lands in the, in the other side of the row, right? And it was very, very quickly. But again, you know, the guy leading the pack, he actually got scared. He hit the brakes and literally his wife flew. He flew. Motorcycle flew. You know, like the, he hit the front brake way too hard and obviously it caused him to you know go over the bike and i'm gonna tell you he broke his collarbone it was a very very serious accident i remember they took him to a, a hospital if i remember correctly they took him to a hospital and then they flew him out from that hospital to another hospital and ultimately he had to have surgery in his collarbone and he was okay but you never know, you know, that's the point. You never know when something's going to happen. And as you're riding, you got to be careful with some of those hazards because right here, I'm having a great time, but, you know, you got tree lines to the left, you got trees to the right. A deer could come out and it could take you out and you won't even see it coming, right? Riding a motorcycle, to me, I always say this, it's a pretty serious issue. We got to be very, very careful. And the thing about it, you know, as I'm coming out of church, I wanted to talk about night riding because, again, it's probably going to be dark. Maybe it's not. Who knows? But, again, it may be dark. And as, you know, driving at night, there may be some things that you really got to pay attention. So I hope to give you a couple tips. But, obviously, before we do that, let's go ahead and hit the church first. All right, time to go home. I guess I gotta put gas first. Man, I definitely gotta practice on my U-turns and my slow riding. I mean, I've been riding since 2010, but I did took like four years off. So it's not like I have a ton of experience, right? And like I said, you know, those four years off, it kind of took me out because it has taken me quite a little bit to be able to get to a point where I'm really comfortable. But the thing about it is that I, I don't even want to get comfortable because once you get comfortable, once you get comfortable, it's when stupid things happen. You know, I want to be on alert. I want to ride. I want to have a good time. But I don't want to get into a point where I'm getting too comfortable because, like I say, people that usually go down are people that are getting comfortable. Anyways, we had a good time in church. I had to help the pastor do some things. And I was telling you guys about my good friend that went down, right? And like I said, that was many years ago. But a deer pretty much took him out. And the thing about that that sucked, I remember this specifically was that like I said you know we were in the Marines and we were both sergeants and I remember calling a commanding officer because ultimately you have to notify your command but I remember him asking if he had the motorcycle safety course and I got so upset because to me it was like is that the only thing you care you know you should obviously ask how he's doing how you know everything is going on what happened now in fact all he care was about the stupid, I guess it's not stupid, but at that point it fell that way, but the motorcycle safety course and to make sure that that Marine specifically was in compliance so he wouldn't get into trouble. I thought it was gonna mess up, but anyways, overall that was a, a one individual. Don't base the Marine Corps in, in one individual. There's always one guy in the group, right? Overall, I had an amazing time as a Marine and I just, like I said, you know, I had a great time and obviously, 
I did it for over 11 years, right? So let's stop and put some gas before I have to push this bike. You guys saw the guy in the bicycle? You gotta be kidding me. Ah, what happened when you put too much gas? I got this rag right here because I've been leaking oil, but I guess I used it for this. I'll tell you one thing, I don't like riding at night, and the biggest reason why, which, you know, the whole video I wanted to talk about it, is because, obviously, it's dangerous, and, I mean, there's a couple pros, I guess sometimes, but, obviously, you know, one of the things is, usually, you see less cars, right, and a lot of times, the weather is really nice, like, right now, we're riding, and, like I said, you know, it's just awesome weather, right, at nighttime, but, then again, you know, it's dangerous and people are doing dumb stuff at nighttime and specifically really late, you know, obviously nothing good happened after midnight. There's always people out there on the weekends drinking and things like that. Obviously riding a motorcycle is already dangerous. So imagine in the middle of the weekend at nighttime when people are doing dumb stuff, right? It's just not a recipe for something good, right? But anyways... The biggest thing that I would say is going to be visibility. And like right now here, it's not too bad. You know, like you could see, you could see in front of you. I mean, literally, this place right here is not that bad. So again, you know, right now here, this is not too bad at all. But as we pass the little city right here and we go more into, you know, a little highway, uh, it gets a lot darker, right? And a lot darker means animals deers and specifically that's why i was talking about that it means less visibility so obviously you can't see like way up there because it's dark right so it kind of restricts the time that you have to react you know typically in daylight i could see way out there so if i see a vehicle breaking down or if i see an issue or i see anything I could start readjusting, I could start making changes, I could start thinking, all right, what do I gotta do? I could process that information, but right now, you can't, you really can't, because obviously, it's dark. So, the visibility thing, to me, is actually a pretty big deal, you know? You could see in front of me, look how much lighting I got on my motorcycle, right? But then again, you know, if something happens pretty close to you, I mean, you ain't stopping this thing, and if something happened right there, you're probably gonna hit her, right? So again, visibility is a concern, but not only to what you see, but also if people see you, right? And that's why a lot of guys always put lighting all over the motorcycles because they wanna make sure that you can see them. You gotta be really careful when you start thinking about all this blackout Harleys and this and that. You're making a blackout and that's cool, very, very cool, but if people can see you, in the middle of the night, you're going to have some issues, right? Look at that guy. So one thing that I would recommend is, obviously, you know, I'm not discouraging anybody from driving at night time. Some people have to do it, and, you know, like me right now, I'm riding my motorcycle at night time. But look at this turn right here. Taking my turn, right? I, I mean, again, you know, I wasn't able to see all the way so it was kind of like, all right, I got to slow down a little bit because I can't see, right? So again, one advice would be, obviously, you know, if you can ride in the daylight, do that. Try not to ride at nighttime. I guess that could be an advice. But also have lighting, you know, whatever you can put in your motorcycle so people can see you. In this case, I'm kind of not following my advice at all because maybe wearing a, a Rogar or something protected, you know, maybe your helmet has some kind of reflection, your vest has some kind of reflection, is probably gonna be something good that you can use, right? And if you have a motorcycle with bags, you can put that stuff in your bags and it will be just fine. So one last thing that I wanna say, you know, kinda of pace yourself when it comes to motorcycles. A lot of times we wanna do everything that we can, right? But in all reality, it could be difficult and it could potentially 
get you in a lot of trouble. You know, pace yourself to a point of increasing your skills as a writer, but don't push yourself too hard. Push yourself just enough. And this is something that I've been doing. Again, you know, it comes down to everything you do. Like I'll be writing and I hit a curve and maybe the next time I try to hit the curve and learn or practice some of my skills while I'm hitting that curve. Again, that doesn't mean that I'm going faster. That doesn't mean that I'm just like doing crazy stuff. It just means that I'm practicing to be a better writer. All right, let's take the roundabout. Actually, the right lane right there that you guys see, it actually allows you to go straight forward. And then the one on the left, this one, obviously you could do a complete roundabout or you can go down that way, right? And here we go. So anyways, guys, I hope you guys are getting back into society. Everything is back to normal with some of you guys. I appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned. We got a ton of videos coming up. And as always, God is in control.